Hi there, I'm going to start by um, saying thank you to Nick for acknowledging country. Uh, I think it's really important and I think it's really relevant. The project I'm going to share with you uh, was based on the Gold Coast and we worked closely alongside uh, some of the First Nations there. One of the Yugambeh elders uh, shared something with me that really resonated and he said that when people come together, amazing things happen. And thank you Emma and thank you the team at ThoughtWorks for bringing us together today. I've only been here a couple of hours and already seeing amazing things happening. Um, I'm going to need a clicker to be able to click through my slides, so I'll grab those that in a moment. DesignWorks are an industrial design group. We design and manufacture physical products, products for the medical devices, for, thank you, for uh, consumer goods, IoT, hardware. If you happen to drop it, it'll make a sound. Um, our approach is CX, UX, user-centered design, human-centered design, design thinking. That's the space that we play in. And I'm going to share with you a, a project that we worked on recently. So in November 2015, uh, Jackie Tratt, Kate Jones and Nigel Shemaine, the CEO of, the, of Goldock, arrived in our offices in West End to announce that DesignWorks had won the tender to design and manufacture the Queen's Baton for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, Warren, our director, is looking very anxious and a little bit nervous about what might happen over the next year. A year later, Jupiter's Casino, this happened. We'll stop it there. So we launched the Queen's Baton. This is an invite to the Commonwealth to come to the Gold Coast and celebrate the Commonwealth Games. They launch in April next year and the Baton began its journey in March from Buckingham Palace. It's a little bit different to the Olympic Games Baton. There's no flame in it. There's only one Baton and Her Majesty the Queen writes a letter to the Commonwealth that gets placed into the Baton and the baton then travels around 70 nations, every Commonwealth nation, over 388 days for 230,000 kilometres, inviting the Commonwealth to join in with the Games that will be launched in April. It was a tender process and DesignWorks was shortlisted for the tender. It was a competitive tender and we were invited to go to the Gold Coast to uh, pitch our ideas. This is the design team that, uh, that went along and you might recognise some of the people there. They, we took the approach that um, we had no ideas. We showed up on the day with no sketches or renderings or prototypes of what our vision might be. We said, look, who are we to tell you what our solution is? We've, we've only just met. Before we do anything, we would like to immerse ourselves on the Gold Coast and truly understand the people, the place, the culture of the Gold Coast. We all have our own paradigms of what the Gold Coast means to us. Um, I honeymooned on the Gold Coast. Uh, Warren used to have a holiday home on the Gold Coast. Um, Alex went to school, he's on the Gold Coast. It all means different things to us. But what our idea of what the Gold Coast is, is something that's different to what is actually on the Gold Coast. This is who we are, this is how we think, and this is how we go about solving your problem. This is the process that we'll use. Now we had a bit of fun with this. At this moment we said, all right, we ran around the back of the table and we pulled out a baton and we presented it to the judging panel and asked them to have a baton relay around the judging table. And so pass it on to the next person as it goes from one nation to the next nation and on to the next nation. And as you can see, the baton that we brought out is a white innate object. It has nothing about it. It has no, dis no features to it. What happened is that when it, when it came back to the table again, bring it back this way please. <laughs> we um, yeah, share the love and pass it around. When it came back to the beginning, we then placed it into a holder. And onto that baton, we then projected videos of the people and the, and the place and the cultures 
the indigenous groups that we would work with, the uh, entrepreneurs that we would interview, the lifeguards, the rangers from the World Heritage sites that surround the Gold Coast, entrepreneurs, artists. And we video, we, our, our point was that this is what we're going to pour into the baton. It is their stories, it is their experiences, it is their culture that we're going to pour into the baton and form a context. So this immersive period is all about forming a context before we start to then drive ideas. Because an idea doesn't exist without context. An idea is meaningless without context. That context would provide the narrative through which we could then form our ideas. That would form the keystone from which all our design decisions would be based on. We would then follow classic divergent, convergent ideation. And so we have landed up at one idea that we really could hang our hat on, that reflected our immersion, that reflected the context, which we would then go on to deliver. And they bought it, and we started our immersive process. The first thing we did is we took our design team down to the Gold Coast, and we spent a long weekend down there visiting the natural arch and the glowworms, uh, going up to the top of Q1, having swims under waterfalls in the hinterlands. It wasn't all work. We worked very closely with, um, with indigenous groups who were relevant to the area. And we took a local, national, and international approach to that. And all of the information and the meetings and the conversations that we had over this period, we brought into our immersion room and put up onto the walls. And we visually uh, uh, represented it. So we captured sound bites from it. We, we shared our own experiences. And we, you can see this is quite an animated process. We rigorously discussed it. We could only do this for short periods of time because we'd burn out. we come back in again and we'd work it through. What we were doing is we were trying to identify where there are similarities, where, where similar stories converged, and where there are outliers, things that were unusual. And this was our context. Actually, there was a bit more to it than that. What we were doing is we were finding, we were tracking these stories and where there were similarities, we would be able to pick that out. Or where there were things that were unusual, we'd be able to identify those. And we found that they came into nine uh, themes. This rebellious spirit as children are jumping off the bridge into the Crumbling Creek. Uh, the movement, this massive scale of, of chaos, and then uh, fractal patterns on the, on, underneath a uh, surfboard manufacturer's um, fiberglass. We then were able to break that down. They, we found that they all had similarities that fell into two groups, contrast and connection. And when we landed on this, we were like, yeah, that's it, we've got it, awesome. And we went home for the weekend and came back on the Monday morning. And whilst we were in the studio making coffees and talking about our weekends, we started to go, you know what? It's lacking something. And everyone in the studio was like, yeah, we thought we had it. We realized that it was lacking this emotion, like there's something in the, in the middle of it that's that we hadn't quite pinpointed. All of, our, all of our process was right, our logic was right, our thinking was right, but it just lacked something. And we went back and we revisited what, was, what had actually happened and the things that we'd spoken about and the things that we'd felt, and the people that we'd make, met and what was going on there. And we realized that these things all came together and there was this similarity that ran through all of these patterns, and all of these stories. What it came down to, what it boiled down to was boundless energy. And we realized that this was at the very core of the Gold Coast. Through our research and through our immersive, pro immersive, immersive process, boundless energy was at the very essence of that. When we presented this to uh, Goldock and to the Queen's Baton Relay team, and we landed on this slide, one of the people in the room burst into tears. That's when we knew that, yeah, we're onto something here. We've got this right. Boundless energy formed the keystone for all of our design decisions and allowed us to move into this ideation phase. And as industrial designers, what do we do? Well, we grab out the pens and start to sketch and start to draw. Uh, this was Jared, one of our junior designers, who at this moment turned around and said, you know what, Rowan? I actually have the confidence to start sketching. I actually have the confidence to start coming up with ideas, to start to, uh, to share those ideas. And it was classic divergent where we just started to spew out ideas. It didn't matter how cool the drawings were. It was more about the concept behind the drawing. And we literally wallpapered every wall within our studio with ideas and bouncing them off each other, crashing them together, thinking about, oh, this could lead on to that. It didn't matter who you were within the group. It was all about 
generating ideas and generating more concepts. There came a point where Goldock said, hey guys, what's going on? Where are you at here? Like we, we're, we're seeing and hearing a, a lot of cool ideas, but where are they actually heading? And so we then converged them down and we found that we had a selection of ideas that we felt were really strong. And we shared those with, with the team. There are three interesting things in this image. The first one is in the corner of the room, we've already got physical prototypes, bits of foam, bits of, that might represent the size, the scale, the shape, the human um, aspects of it. Each of the concepts has a list which talks about the theme, talks about the uh, aspects of the immersion, immersive period that this, this concept is reflecting upon or is representing. Then how that might play out visually underneath it. And then the third thing is the people who are sat in the room. This is Steve, who's the head of the Queen's Baton Relay team. It's his job to organise the relay team. Uh, his background is in security, and we don't mess with Steve. Next to Steve is Katie, who is the head of marketing for Goldock. Next to her is Tamara, who is the head of communications at Goldock. And just out of the picture is Patrick, who is a liaison between government and Goldock. So we had our stakeholders in the room. We had them there sharing, going through the themes and how that might play out and the physicality of it. They were involved in that process. Now we then moved down into our final concepts. And I'm only allowed to show you one of those, and this is the one that got up. We presented back to them our four concepts, and the loop was the one that resonated with them. The loop captures the bolder reverence of the Gold Coast. So these are, these are sound bites that were shared to us during that immersive period. If anywhere can do it, the Gold Coast can do it. Uh, recognising our past, acknowledging the present and looking to the future. This is Luther again, who shared that with us. And our interpretation of that was into this um, three-phased or, or three-segmented uh, baton with a loop through the centre of it. When people meet, when they come to a corroboree or to a stadium or to a place, amazing things can happen. We took the approach with the material, so the physical side of it, and we also allowed this to influence our choice of technology and how that technology would influence people. There's the linear contrast, which is a direct representation of the linear uh, nature of the Gold Coast, with the hinterlands, with the built environment, and then with the ocean. And that being represented through the hinterlands of the uh, macadamia timber, the sailor st steel stringer, which captures the glint that you see off of the built environment on the Gold Coast, and then the plastic front, the plastic front was made from uh, reclaimed sea waste. So we worked with groups um, to collect waste from the waterways and from the, from the beaches around the Gold Coast. Um, we learned through our immersive period that uh, macadamia timber or macadamias are native to the Gold Coast. That's where they originated. Who knew? And it was only, it was only sprigs and samples that were taken over to Hawaii and to America that we now see commercially um, uh, made into macadamia nuts and macadamia products. And there's a visual connection to the message. So Her, Her Majesty's handwritten message goes into this uh, element on the, so of the side of the baton. Now this is quite a, um, quite a controversial piece. The Goldock organisation, government, and the Commonwealth Games Federation are traditionally very conservative. And we were offering a solution for a baton that was anything but traditional. Uh, that was irreverent, that was bold, that had this es essence of boundless energy. And we realised that we needed to sell it into the Queen's Baton Relay team and get their approval. It then had to move up into the Gold Coast Federation, so their executive board and the board above that. So there's these layers starting to creep in. They were then having to take it to the Queensland government. And then the Queensland government had to then sell it up into the Commonwealth Federation itself, which is based in Edinburgh in the UK. So, how on earth did we take this when they were expecting a traditional baton and say, well, we're offering you something that's a loop that you can see through the centre of? The stories and the outcomes of our immersive process provided ammunition to really tighten up the solution. Everybody wants to be a designer. Everybody has an opinion of what the Gold Coast represents and what it means. And they all had their curveballs that they wanted to throw in at these various levels. But the story is about boundless energy. 
The story is about the past, the present and the future. The story is about the relevance of macadamia timber. The story is about the relevance of um, recycled and reclaimed uh, plastics and sustainability tied into all those values that uh, Goldock have and ties into the values that are current for what the Gold Coast represents. And that provided that surety to be able to sell it up through all of these levels and not have, well, it should, why, why aren't you using fiberglass? You know, that's, there's, a, there's a great um, surf culture on the Gold Coast. It allowed us to protect that design. Finally, we were able to push it through. This was, that was actually a really difficult period. In terms of our timelines, that got stretched out and out and out because it was so controversial and because it was so hard for those traditional groups to move into this new space. So we started to deliver it. And the first thing we did was get it off those sketches and into a physical uh, CAD model. So we were, we were virtually representing it here and working out how the hell do we actually make this thing? What kind of wall thicknesses are we going to need? How, what kind of spaces are we going to need within the pro item itself to be able to fit the technology? What kind of technology is going to be required? PCBs, circuit boards, wiring. How are we going to get those into this space? How are we going to get capacitive sensing to work? How are we going to get the timber to mate with the plastic at the front? All of these things started to, to kind of rise out of it. It's all well and good having virtual prototypes like this, but we still required physical prototypes. We still had classic bits of foam that we could go, yeah, right, that kind of looks about right. And how would, we were running up and down through our corridors going, how's this going to go when one relay person passes it on to the next one? What's going to happen at that interchange? How, how is that going to be experienced? When people are standing in front of their friends as proud as could be with the baton, how is that going to be represented by the media or by other people? <clears throat> Those prototypes then moved into more refined prototypes. This is a 3D print of what we were thinking where the size and the scale then started to emerge. And questions like, well, hang on a second, if a child gets their finger caught in it and it twists, have we got a finger trap there? So we built one and we tested it. So it's, it's a classic, you know, we have a, a, a hypothesis, let's make a quick prototype, try it out and challenge it, learn from it and make another one. This also allowed us to have conversations with subcontractors and with electrical engineers and with people who, who were going to, we were have, going to have to bring into the project say, look, we're thinking of this. Do you reckon we could make it so we could get that into the back of here and screw it down? And they would offer their insights into it or how they would approach that. So when it arrived on their desk, it wasn't a surprise. They'd already provided value. They'd already provided insights into it. And they were able to then go, great, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, of course we could do it. I've been thinking about this and we're ready to go and build into it. So it's a, a way of encompassing and co-creating something together. And these prototypes are absolutely valuable for that. Uh, this is a video um, of the uh, Mudgery Bar um, Woodworking Club. One of the things that we weren't uh, expecting that happened was the uh, bringing together of, of really interesting people in collaborative ways. Uh, they were able to source macadamia timber um, for us locally and, we'll be able, and assisted us in then preparing that ready to be machined. This is us in our workshop uh, making the back of the, um, the baton. The macadamia timber has significant um, uh, properties in itself, but it also has massive relevance to the Yugen Bear nations and the idea of the past, present and future through um, elders walking with youngsters to a meeting or a gathering and taking macadamia nuts with them because it's great sustenance to travel with. But they were also planting nuts as they went, knowing that in future generations there would be trees there from which they could gather food. So the past, the present and the future. It also allowed us to meet um, other groups. So we went diving on the spit. We worked with the, with the local council to collect uh, polymers and plastics that we could then take back to the studio, sort out, clean, and go through a process to then prepare that so we could melt it, machine it, and manufacture it into this leading edge around the front. This, was, this stemmed back to an insight that came to us where every Commonwealth nation has an ocean boundary. We are all connected by the sea. And by the year 2050, there's going to be more plastic in our oceans by volume than fish. So this has real, um, uh, in terms of sustainability, this has real significance. These stories are embedded into the, the item itself. You can see us here in our studio melting the plastic down and then going through the process of machining this front um, leading edge. And then the message itself that goes inside the baton. We 
we learnt about um, an indigenous mob up in Camoil who are working with the University of Queensland to take spin effects, which has uh, significance in terms of medicines and artefact generation to indigenous groups, and develop it into a nanotechnology which can completely change material properties that it's added to. So this is bleeding edge technology. And we were able to introduce them to uh, some expertise at Griffith University, so it was a beautiful collaboration, to develop a world first in terms of this bespoke paper that has amazing physical properties, but also represents an incredible past and an incredible legacy that the Queen then wrote her message onto. We folded it up, she signed it and placed it into the baton. <clears throat> and finally, the technology. So here's Alex and uh, Jared will appear in a minute looking a bit glazy-eyed, uh, probably three o'clock in the morning, working with our electronics, there he is, <laughs> working with our electronics teams, designing and developing the LEDs and the capacitive sensing and the GPS and all of the equipment that goes inside this, getting that right. We've actually got another prototype in the studio. Uh, we call it the baton in a box because it has all of that technology inside it and we can troubleshoot it and we can work on it and as updates are necessary, we can make those software changes. Test it out first, again, this iterative prototyping before we then upload it into the batons. So in March, we were able to d deliver the Queen her baton. <laughs> you can't be late for the Queen. <laughs> And, um, and it's, it began its journey around, uh, around the world, visiting Commonwealth nations. And we've been tracking it. And we, we have in our studio a map of the world with pins as it goes around the world. And it's really validating that immersion, ideation, and delivery. So working out the context, creating ideas that reflect that context, and then delivering a bat baton that's going to resonate. We're learning, we're hearing back from the Queen's Baton Relay team as they're taking it to youth groups, to schools, to community groups, to councils, to governments, to industry organisations, and sharing the baton and inviting to everyone to Australia, that it's providing a lens through which those countries can share their stories around sustainability, or around indigenous identity, or around um, um, other aspects that are relevant to that we've embedded into it. Which means that as the Queen's Baton Relay team are, are talking at all these different levels, they have relevance and then it allows that lens or that opportunity to happen. So we did all this preparation, we delivered it and it's, it's, it's travelling around the world as we speak. One of the things that we didn't prepare for was in Namibia, uh, the moment after this photograph was taken, the baboon turned around and bit <laughs> the Queen's baton. <laughs> Thank you for today. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And, um, Please keep your eye open. It'll arrive in Brisbane um, on Boxing Day and it'll travel around Australia for 100 days until uh, not Her Majesty the Queen, but Prince Charles will open up Her Majesty's letter at, at the Gold Coast and read it to open the Commonwealth Games. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions?